All right, so welcome everyone to our college fair today, the Southern Association of College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine and I'm gonna serve as your facilitator for this session. Um, before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping announcements. So you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Um, you, your camera is also available uh, for assistance. So you are muted, your, your video is off, the panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, next, I wanna say that you can sign up for more sessions. This is just one of our many college presentations offered. So you can sign up for another session. And then also the recording will be available. So you can go back to where you registered to view this recording at any point. With that said, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our very first presenter for today. And so our first presenter is the Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady University. Good evening, everyone. I am Tierra Lane, I'm an enrollment advisor at Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady University, or for short, FRANU. Um, we are located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We are the only Catholic Franciscan University in the South, very mission-centric, and we do offer degree programs um, mainly in healthcare in the sciences, um, ranging from associates all the way to doctoral degrees. Um, Fran U is a very small, intimate uh, community. On average, student to professor ratio starting off as a freshman is about 25 to one. But once you're in, you've delved into your major, um, those class sizes kind of dwindle down a little bit. Um, we are very focused on simulated learning with us having several clinical programs. Um, we do like for our students to get that hands-on experience before going out into the workforce. Um, with us being a Franciscan university, we are very, um, very focused on service and service learning. So that's one of the things that is incorporated into all of our curriculums. In addition to that, we do offer free tutoring and a writing center for all students. Um, and like I said, that's free of charge. And we are one of the most affordable private institutions in the state of Louisiana. Um, right here, you can kind of see our simulated environmental teaching hospital. Um, this is just a few of our clinical students, um, some of the experience that they are able to gain using these human-like mannequins in our simulated environment. Just um, a few admissions requirements. For any freshman, um, the admissions requirement is a 2.5 TOPS core GPA and a minimum of an ACT um, of 20, a composite score of 20 on the ACT. For any transfer students, if you earned over 30 credit hours at another institution, then the minimum would be a 2.0 GPA. And for anyone interested in applying, you can go to franu.edu forward slash apply. As far as financial aid is concerned, we do offer university scholarships. Um, the deadline for those scholarships is November 15th each year. We do offer them on a first come first serve basis. So you're automatically considered for those scholarships when you apply. Um, we do have two additional scholarships that we offer um, that have actual scholarship applications because those two are chosen by a committee, but the remainder of our scholarships are first come first serve. Um, for Louisiana students, we do accept the TOPS grant. We accept all forms of financial aid, including Pell grants as well. And we do accept private or outside scholarships. To learn more about our scholarships, you can visit franu.edu forward slash financial aid. And just some contact information. If you have any questions, you can visit, you can send us any questions to admissions at franu.edu or give us a call at 225-526-1631. In order to keep up with all things that we have going on, any upcoming events, um, any info sessions you'd like to attend, or if you just wanna visit campus or set up a virtual visit, 
you can visit brandu.edu forward slash experience and you'll be able to see all of our past recorded events and also um, a couple of videos about some of our programs that we offer on campus and kind of what those students do in their day-to-day -day process. Thank you. All right, thank you, Fran Yu. So up next, we have Belmont Abbey College. Hi, uh, my name is Lindsay Janae Raphael, and I am the assistant director here at Belmont Abbey. Um, and so Belmont Abbey, we are located just outside of Charlotte in Belmont, North Carolina. Uh, we were founded in 1876, and we are the only Catholic institution from Northern Virginia all the way down um, to Florida on, on the East Coast. And we're also a liberal arts um, institution as well. Um, a little bit about the Abbey, we are a smaller school. Um, our total undergraduate tra traditional students is 1,254, um, but our total enrollment is just over 1,400 as we do have an adult degree program here on campus. Um, our average GPA for our last class was a 3.2. Our average um, SAT is a 1065 with our ACT being a 21. Um, and us uh, being fortunate to be a small school, our average class size is 14 um, and our student teacher ratio is 16 to one. One thing about our classes, we do cap our classes at 25. So we're still able to allow students to have that personal um, connection with their our classmates and their professors. Um, and here at the Abbey, we have over 25 majors and over 30 minors. Our top majors here are business, biology, and education. Um, us being just outside of Charlotte, we do have a lot of our students that do internships within the city, as well with local um, businesses around the college. Um, our biology majors have over a 90% acceptance rate into med school post-graduation. And then our education program does have a teacher licensure program um, that they complete over their four years. This year, we added four new majors, um, biochemistry, nursing, health information management and analytics, and also um, supply chain management. And then back in November, we did um, add cybersecurity to our computer studies minor. Here at the Abbey, we are at NCAA Division II school. We have a little over 40 teams, um, uh, 40 athletic teams, and we compete in Conference Carolinas. Uh, we recently added rugby this past fall, um, and in the last five years, we've added cheerleading, bowling, um, tri triathlon, and field hockey. And then we have over 40 clubs and organizations. Whenever we see our, whenever students um, want to see more on campus, all they have to do is go to our director of student activities. Um, and so one thing, we have ballroom dancing club, we have board game uh, club, but we also have Greek life, campus activities board and student government association. Um, there's always something going on on campus every weekend. And we were able to adapt um, since we are on campus right now with COVID on how to have um, COVID safe activities on campus now. Here at the Abbey, everybody is awarded a merit scholarship based off um, after uh, upon admissions decision. Um, right now, they're based off of solely GPA. Um, since we are a Division II school, um, we are allowed to award athletic scholarships, and we also have premier scholarships here. Uh, we have the Honors College, St. Thomas More, Felix Hinnemeyer Catholic Leadership, as well as Bishop Krillin. You can find more information about these four programs at bac.edu backslash premier. These are all um, scholarship based programs and students do have to participate after um, receiving. It is a program and it's not just a scholarship. Um, our admissions process, we do have a free application here. Um, it's all online and you can find that at bac.edu backslash apply. 
Um, right now we are accepting official and unofficial transcripts. And those are the only two things that we need to make an admissions decision. It's the application and the transcript. No essays, no test scores um, are required to receive that admissions decision. Um, we did operate on an early action period, but now we're solely on rolling admissions all the way up to August um, until we start school. And then lastly, our tuition, um, we are currently sitting at 18,500. We do have a tuition freeze. Um, so that means that we don't see any um, rise in price. Um, so in 2013 was when we reset tuition and we don't see that um, rising anytime soon. Um, and then our room and board is based off of all rooms um, available. So it might be a little bit cheaper for our freshmen, um, but right now it's sitting at 11,590. Uh, we do accept the FAFSA here. And then more than 85% of our full-time students receive some sort of financial aid. Um, right now we're currently sitting in our um, financial aid, our financial aid packages are starting to go out. So there's still time to receive that here um, if you are still interested in Belmont Abbey. Um, this is our contact. Uh, you can, my email is here um, on this screen, as well as our admissions at bac.edu email. Um, that's where all of our um, counselors will be able to access and communicate with you guys. Thank you. All right, thank you, Belmont Abbey. So up next, we have College of Coastal Georgia. Hi, I'm Mandy Lessig. I'm one of the freshman admissions counselors here at the College of Coastal Georgia. And for the next few minutes, I encourage you to kind of think beyond your typical college experience. So the College of Coastal Georgia is a destination public college focused on student success at every turn. Our student services and affordability speak for themselves and come with everything you see on screen. Our 193 acre campus is located in Brunswick, Georgia, an hour south of Savannah, Georgia, and an hour north of Jacksonville, Florida. Founded in 1961 as part of the University System of Georgia, Coastal Georgia has roughly 3,500 total students that come from 44 different states and 37 different countries. Our average class size is 19 students per professor, which allows students to gain hands-on experience and know their professors from day one. Our majors are tailored to be flexible enough to adapt to current trends in the local uh, and state job market. We offer 24 different degree programs. We have about 50 different concentrations and majors. So students are really able to work with faculty to design programs that suit their career ambitions. Our location is one of our greatest strengths in educating students at the College of Coastal Georgia. With the local tourism market, we also have protected wetlands and the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center for our criminal justice students. Uh, so our, your experience is really going to extend past the classroom walls. We offer internships, jobs, research, experiential learning. All of this takes place in Brunswick, as well as our barrier islands of St. Simons, Shekel Island, Sea Island, and Little St. Simons, better known as the Golden Isles. Our most popular programs are business administration, psychology, and nursing. Uh, our nursing program does have a national ranking, and we have a five-year running 100% pass rate on the NCLEX. Uh, some of our other hands-on programs include our culinary arts degree, exercise science, and hospitality and tourism management. Uh, the Career and Academic Advising Center is actually combined here to help students begin with their end in mind. Uh, so we want to prepare students from their first day in the classroom to their first day post-coastal. Whether that's grad school, research opportunities, or moving right into the workforce, our students are prepared to hit the ground running as soon as they leave us. Uh, while you're a student here, we have a lot of support services, including all of our tutoring options. We do peer-to-peer -peer tutoring, supplemental instructors. We have a full writing center. You can do open office hours with any of your professors. We have a note-taking service and 24-hour online tutoring. Coastal Georgia students can also challenge themselves by applying to the honors program, gaining real-world experience with on-campus or off-campus jobs, or participating in undergraduate research. Now, there's a lot of campus learning in the classroom, but there's a lot that happens outside of the classroom. 
Uh, our student life and activities and events are really varied, especially for the small size we have. We have over 50 different clubs and organizations for students to join, as well as all of our events in space. Um, some of the most rewarding times on campus is actually when students are kind of enjoying those off hours, building those connections, meeting the people in the dorms. Uh, so after a full day of learning and exploring on campus, students do have the chance to go back to their own personal retreat. 90% uh, of our dorms do have private bedrooms. They all are suite style, and they're just steps from all of our dining options. All of those dorms also have free laundry, as well as all full-time students do get a free pass onto Jekyll Island, which is a state park. Uh, so the mission of all of our student life and opportunities is to support our students' development through their entire time with us, whether that's joining clubs, doing service learning, your academic, physical, mental, social health are all really important to the coastal community. So we're not kidding when we say we're a destination college. Everything you see on screen, students have access to within 30 minutes of our campus. Affordability even stretches through the community. Through the thanks to the generosity of local partners, students can receive discounts on everything from ice cream to kayak rentals through our Mariner Mates program. As a port city, Brunswick can provide creature comforts that students find in a lot of larger cities. Yes, we have Chick-fil-A and Starbucks and Sam's Club. We also love sharing with anyone who visits or there are coastal students, all of those little unique gems. Uh, there's a reason why the Golden Isles are consistently ranked one of the best vacation spots in the nation hammocking on Driftwood Beach, playing world-class golf on Sea Island, paddle boarding in the marshes, and don't even get us started on all of the local restaurants. So college is more where you learn, it's also where you live. So come learn where others vacation. So affordability is something very important to us at the college. Uh, we are actually recently ranked one of the ninth most affordable small public schools in the entire Southeast. And 85% of our students do use some sort of financial aid. So we work with students with federal aid, state aid, third party scholarships, as well as our own institutional scholarships. We have the one scholarship application and we award over $19 million annually to all of our students, returning students as well as freshmen. And from last year to this year, we've added over 20 new scholarships just for freshman students. These scholarships are merit-based, incentive-based, honors program based off of different degrees. We really try to help students throughout their entire time with us. And for students who live outside of Georgia, but not too far, all of our border states are eligible for in-state tuition. So that's Alabama, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. So I would love to keep in touch. Here's some of our social media uh, for the Office of Admissions. We obviously share admissions. Uh, we also let students know when we're doing initiatives like this month, we are waiving our application fee. So if you apply before the end of February, it's completely free. Uh, we are still accepting fall students and we've gone completely test optional for fall. So all that we need for you to accept you is gonna be your application online and then your official transcript. You get an admissions decision within one week because uh, we really want to kind of take the stress out of admissions. So you don't have to do any kind of <laughs> personal essays, no kind of attaching all these recommendations. We really want you to get into the coastal community. We're also able to still do campus visits every single day of the week, Monday through Friday. They're socially distanced and we do limit the participation to make sure your family as well as all of our staff can stay safe. Campus visits, we also do Saturday events as well as accepted student receptions we're going to be doing throughout the spring that are also going to be socially distanced. So if you're interested in any of those, you can visit us at ccga.edu slash visit and we would love to show you around Coastal. All right, thank you. Up next, we have American University. Great, so good evening. Uh, my name is Dylan Robinson. I'm an Assistant Director of Admissions at American University in Washington, DC. Uh, so we are a mid-size university, research university. We like to call ourselves a college-centered research university. So again, about 8,500 8, undergraduate students, 5,700 grad students, average class size is 23, 11 to one student to faculty ratio. All 50 states are represented over 122 countries as well, and about 32% of our students uh, are students of color. Uh, a little bit about kind of campus life. So we are division one. Uh, we play in the Patriot League in 15 uh, different teams. We have over 150 other uh, clubs and organizations, 45 
different intramural sports and club sports, and then 29 Greek organizations as well. Um, we have everything from your general model UN, um, model UN mock trial debate team, as well as uh, our cheese tasting club or a beekeeping society. We have one of the most active student bodies in the country. Uh, we have the number one most politically active student body. Obviously, D is going to play into that. If you're interested in, uh, we definitely have it. Another fun fact about our campus and our kind of student run organizations is that our entire uh, carbon neutral. So we're the first university in the country to become carbon neutral of all of our energies come from sustainable resources. And we are definitely very proud of that. And you'll find a lot of different environmental organizations on campus as well. We do have six different schools uh, at AU specifically. Again, you don't apply into a specific school or program. You just apply to the university as a whole. You can come in undecided or declared. It's completely up to you. Uh, and you have until the end of your sophomore year to solidify a major. Some of our more popular majors are gonna be political science, uh, international uh, studies, journalism, film and media arts, and then business. So one of the huge kind of aspects for our, um, our students and kind of their educational experience at AU is gonna be study abroad. So about 70% uh, of our students do study abroad. We have three AU centers abroad, AU Madrid, AU Kenya, and AU Brussels. We, but besides that, we have about 150 other programs to choose from. So again, you name it, we have it. Uh, we try to remove any barriers for students who want to study abroad. So we do have a lot of different uh, scholarship opportunities. All the financial aid will transfer over. All the classes will transfer over. So again, any student who wants that global uh, experience, we will definitely make that happen for them. Again, that includes any major. So whether you are a um, business major or environmental have opportunities to study abroad. Another huge aspect uh, for our students is going to be internships. Uh, again, if you know DC um, at all, it pretty much runs on interns. So our students will have opportunities and no matter what field you are in, whether it's communications, again, every major news network, both nationally and internationally have offices in DC. We like to say that local news is national news. Um, healthcare, the National Institutes of Health, the World Health Organization, the Department of Health and Human Services uh, are all uh, in DC. Um, if you're interested in business, uh, uh, Capital One is uh, headquartered in Northern Virginia, Amazon HQ2 is more moving into Northern Virginia, Marriott, Choice Hotels, and Hilton all have their headquarters in DC. So again, DC is not just the, the seat of government, it definitely is. Every major industry has offices and fields, um, uh, uh, again, offices and opportunities in DC. With that, we are the only school in DC that offers what we call the U-Pass. So the U-Pass allows unlimited rides on the metro and on the bus system for students so they can easily get to those internships out to dinner to any of the museums uh, downtown to the airport. It's a really nice perk. Again, if you've been to DC, um, you really don't need to drive. We definitely recommend our students uh, utilize the public transportation system. It's very, very clean, it's efficient, uh, and it definitely gets you anywhere you need to go within DC and the greater DMV area. Again, I did mention a little bit about our city. Our campus is only half of the experience uh, for our students. We definitely utilize uh, DC to our advantage with the different mini opportunities that it offers um, for our students. Again, where we're located, we're in the northwest part of the city. So we're at the end of Massachusetts Avenue, which is known as Embassy Row in DC. And one of our traditions for our students is that uh, during Halloween, our students would go trick-or-treating at the different embassies, getting candy from all over the world. Um, again, with our location, we kind of have the best of both worlds. We have a 90-acre closed campus in the middle of the city. So again, you still get that city urban feel, but you do have a, a closed campus to call home. Again, more amazing opportunities within DC besides kind of the internships. We're a little spoiled with uh, all the museums are free. So the Smithsonian, the zoo, they offer a lot of great opportunities as well. We do have obviously um, professional sports teams, uh, a lot of different conferences come to DC. Uh, and again, it's a very international and global uh, city as well. Talking a little bit about the application process. So we do have three different deadlines. 
uh, early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision. We do not have early action and we do not have rolling admission. Uh, so to complete your application, we will need everything on the checklist from your application uh, and transcript. Um, we are test optional. So again, um, we do recommend uh, students who don't feel like the test scores reflect them, um, they don't have to submit them. So we, again, we are test optional for that. Uh, and everything else uh, you need to complete the application. We do holistic reviews uh, of all applications. For financial aid, we do have need-based and merit-based. Um, we do meet 100% of demonstrated need for students. So about 40% of our students graduate with, um, with no loan debt, which I think is pretty awesome. Again, every student is considered for merit and need-based aid with FAFSA and CSS profile. And then again, if you do wanna reach out, definitely reach out to us um, via social media, email, and we are hosting a few campus tours as well. Uh, and those will increase uh, as the spring and summer uh, go on. But thank you. All right, thank you. So up next, we have the University of Kentucky. Thank you, I'm gonna share my screen. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Christina Lopez. I work in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions for the University of Kentucky. So to start us off, I wanted to just go through some fast facts. Uh, the University of Kentucky is a large public tier one research institution and we're located in Lexington, Kentucky. We have just over 31,000 students, so we're quite large. Um, and I always tell students that now is an excellent time to be at UK. Uh, in the last decade, we've gone through a $2.5 billion campus transformation. This includes upgrades on academic spaces, athletics facilities, 14 new resident halls, as well as campus resources for you. So campus looks pretty different now, but we're really excited about all the changes that we've gone. Now, when it comes to sort of some more specific details, uh, one really unique factor about UK's academics is we are one of eight institutions in the entire nation that has a full complement of a pretty wide variety of undergraduate degrees, graduate degrees, and professional schools such as medical, dentistry, law, pharmacy, all of those opportunities all on one campus. So not only do you have a lot of options to choose from because we have so many academic programs, but this is also an opportunity for you to combine and have cross learning as well. We do offer over 200 majors in our undergraduate college and we have 16 academic colleges to choose from. If you're the kind of student that isn't 100% sure what you wanna do quite yet, we do offer exploratory studies in nine of our colleges, just to give you a chance to get your feet wet and not commit to anything too early on if you would like. And when it comes to the student experience and sort of tying together all the opportunities with the support we have on campus, on average, about 90% of our students upon graduation will have participated in research, internships, shadowing, and study abroad, which we have great partnerships in over 70 countries. When it comes to the admission side, um, when we review our applications, just know that our approach is very holistic. So we're not gonna just look at a test score or a GPA and make a decision. We know that your high school experience um, is, is encompassing a lot of different things to make you successful. So this list right here is certainly not a checklist, but it's just some examples of what we will see on various students' applications. So definitely uh, don't be shy about bragging about yourself, include any and everything. It really helps in our review process. That also is helpful for our scholarship review as well. We have scholarships that range from merit-based scholarships, legacy, diversity scholarship, departmental, and of course, FAFSA for need-based. A big part of our campus experience that I think draws students to attend the University of Kentucky is also our campus life. So I've already explained to you the success of our academic programs, but coupling that with the campus experience is why I think a big reason students are choosing UK as their number one choice. So we have, I mentioned in the very beginning, we've gone through a really big campus transformation in the last decade. And within our 14 new resident halls, that's a really big push for our students living on campus. It is not a requirement for first time freshmen to live on campus, 
but 90% of our incoming freshman class do live on campus. The housing is that nice. Um, actually, a fun fact about our housing, all of our beds come with a Tempur-Pedic mattress. So I always joke and say our students work hard, play hard, and sleep hard because those beds are just absolutely incredible. We also have over 30 dining facilities. We're home to the largest campus Starbucks. And um, that's just a fun fact for you if you're a coffee drinker. Involvement's also a big piece of the UK experience. We have over 550 student organizations. I know it might sound like a lot of uh, options and a little overwhelming, but I promise you, you will find your fit and you'll have so many opportunities to meet people that way and help make a big campus feel small. It can be anything from academic, club sports, Greek life, religious organizations. There's even an organizations where students can foster puppies on campus and help them be service dogs one day. That's my favorite one. We're also an SEC institution. So our athletics uh, is within the Southeastern Conference Division. Being Division I gives us a really nice edge on our, um, how competitive we are. We have 22 varsity athletic sports. So it's just a really nice experience to not only have a vibrant campus community, but also a very vibrant athletic community when it comes to our, our student high spirited community. We're located again in Lexington, Kentucky. It's right outside of campus, less than five minutes away. Uh, it is a pretty big city, second largest city of the state, third safest city to live in. And we're also known as the horse capital of the world. So if you're an outdoorsy person, you will absolutely find your space there. If you're more of a city person, you like a good brunch, or like being out at concerts, you'll also find that as well. So our students love the city experience. I would invite you to visit campus. We are offering in-person tours. They are a little bit limited with the guidelines, but there's certainly a chance for you to still see what campus is all about. Uh, campus is, is alive and well. Uh, snow fell on the ground a few days ago, so it might look a little different, but um, we would invite you to visit campus. Just jump on there, that website, and there's also a virtual option as well. And then here's my information. Feel free to save this, take a picture of it. I'm happy to share more about your interests and what the University of Kentucky can do for you. So thanks so much for listening and go Cats. All right, thank you, the University of Kentucky. So for the remaining portion of our session today, we're gonna to open it up um, with a few questions. So if possible, I would love if all of our panelists could turn on their cameras and I will go ahead and repeat our first question. They will respond to the question in the order in which they present it. So our first question, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So um, for me, I would just tell all students um, to make a list first off of um, some colleges that maybe you want to visit or have visited um, and choose the pros and cons when choosing a college, um, take into account your major, um, what region that you would prefer to live in. Did you wanna live somewhere um, cold or did you wanna live somewhere where it's sunny? Um, if you wanna be close to home or far away from home, and I would rank those colleges based on um, those factors so that you can kind of see which um, school mostly fits you. Yeah, I was kind of saying the same. Um, one thing that I definitely um, find beneficial is getting on campus and seeing if you would have that fit um, and try doing um, like the three touring a middle sized school, a small school and a large school just so you can see where you um, would fit best um, and knowing who you are as a person, um, if you like smaller classes, if you're gonna succeed there or if you're gonna succeed um, in larger classes, if you can be more of a fly on the wall and like the, the bigger school. So it really just depends on what, um, make, like just make sure you're choosing a school that's gonna fit you um, rather than a school that you're trying to fit into. Yeah, and my main advice for anyone looking for colleges is don't wait is the kind of simple one, but a lot of kids kind of feel overwhelmed by admissions, by searching for colleges, and they kind of wait and wait and wait. They see the deadline as then I'll submit an application, but admissions, it can take years to find the right school, and that's okay. You can never start too early. I have, you know, freshmen that come for a campus tour 
that's cool. Like we want to explore with you. I think exploring is part of the college process that we forget about because we get overwhelmed with test scores and application deadlines and all of these financial aid stresses. I think exploring is kind of the best way to really know, see if you can go to like a homecoming event at that school, really get to know what the school looks like as a student instead of kind of just the traditional kind of campus tour where you're kind of all in a group, like really get a feel for the kids that go there because those those are the people that are going to be in classes with you. I think it's also important to look at besides, you know, the major that you're interested in, a lot of schools will have uh, the same major, but also look at the different um, student support services that schools offer. So again, if you want to be active in Greek life or you want to, um, you know, have a, a tutoring accessibility, um, definitely make sure that the schools that you're interested in, you know, also have that those different support services that you uh, want in the university. I would say definitely keep an open mind. Um, I think some students are like, oh, I thought my heart was set on staying close to home or going far away or going to a small school or a big school. This is a really good example of different kinds of schools all in one setting. So keep an open mind. I'm sure you found out, I know I learned a lot about these schools I didn't know about. And I'm like, wow, that was really cool. So keep an open mind. You don't have to limit yourself based on where your friends are going or where your parents want you to go all the time or where you think you might wanna go. Um, explore, see what your interests are and you're gonna end up in, in a great place if you think about it in that way. Thank you all. Um, one additional question. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and share. So what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? So for um, our students, our student government association, they've started what they call the Turkey Bowl each um, fall. And so they have different teams. All the students are eligible to um, submit their teams. And it's like a bowling game, but it's outside and they actually bowl with frozen turkeys. So that's um, become one of the big events that we have on campus. One thing that we do is that we have matriculation um, coming in for all of our incoming freshmen. And so they attend mass together. And then four years later, um, when they graduate, we actually have mass on our front lawn in front of our basilica. And so that way they're coming in together as a class, but they're also leaving together as a class their senior year. Um, so I would definitely say that's something students look forward to um, when they graduate. So I have the privilege of not just working for the College of Coastal Georgia, but I also attended. Um, so my favorite event as a student and staff member is actually the same. It's homecoming. Um, we always do a whole week of events. Um, Saturday, we always have our women's basketball game, our men's basketball game. We do a total whiteout. Everything is full. We are still able to allow our students to come in, even with COVID, because we've been able to do social distancing. So luckily, our students are still going to get to go to the homecoming game. Um, but all of our events for the whole week, we always go really in with a the theme. Uh, and it was so fun as a student to be on the planning side. And now as like a staff member to kind of sit back and watch the students run the game. That's still my favorite you know, on campus event is just watching kids kind of learn how to be event planners while in college, just doing these kind of fun events. So still my favorite. So I kind of already mentioned my favorite uh, for our students to go trick or treating at the different embassies. But another one um, that happens every spring is our Founders Day ball. Um, it's kind of it's kind of like prom. Uh, students get dressed up but it's hosted at a different uh, Smithsonian Museum every year. So it's been at the African-American um, History Museum, the Air and Space Museum, the National Portrait Gallery. It's a very DC thing to do for students to celebrate our Founders Day Ball, um, to get dressed up, we'll bus you to and from the museum uh, and just have a dance. This was so hard to narrow down, but I would say, um, I guess one of our, our fan favorites would be, since we're again a really big athletic school, is Big Blue Madness happens um, when our basketball season opens up. It's kind of the first time we introduce our players and the whole Lexington community comes out. All the students come in with their white and blue. It's like a very big event. And Rupp Arena is where our students 
um, or our basketball team plays and they also have um, famous ice cream for some reason during that day. So it's like a really fun opening night for a really exciting season. Thank you all for responding. And then finally, there was one additional question in our chat um, about campus life. So I'm wondering if each of our panelists could speak very briefly about what is campus life like on your campus? Um, so we are a Catholic institution. So um, a lot of our students are very involved in our campus ministry and in our mass. We do have weekly mass. Um, each week. Um, we have a uh, student government association. So they have these monthly events that they host where students can kind of come out and participate um, in different games and giveaways and things like that. So that's something else that students have to look forward um, to. And also because we are very small, the students and the professors really have that um, close knit relationship. So walking through campus, you might see someone and everyone speaking and very nice um, because every, it's kind of like a small family since everyone knows everyone. Yeah, so us having that like small, small tight knit community, there's always something going on rather like in our students activities office. And so whether it's like Abbey Fest or um, movies in our uh, the commons. Uh, we also have a lot of athletic teams. And so we try to get most of our students to go there. 60% of our students are athletes. So between the activities going on on campus, whether it's like karaoke, music with uh, our movie nights with the monks, um, there's always an activity going on, and especially we're able to continue that now. So we're very fortunate. Um, one big thing about our campus life is our students are really, really involved in a lot of the day to day decisions on campus. Um, so our student government organization does open houses and they do talkbacks. They'll, they'll have like the president and vice presidents and all these kind of student driven programs to kind of create new clubs or new organizations or new things. We're always trying to do something that we haven't done before. So our students are really involved. It's really campus around students. Um, all of our new majors are all been of the last 10 years have all been student decisions. They've all been voted on and approved by students before we even brought them to academics. So that's something that we really want students here at Coastal. This is your college and it's your experience and you make it. And so we really try to get our kids kind of out there and as, as active as possible. Yeah, so we, again, kind of have the best of both worlds. We have a traditional college campus. The picture behind me is actually our quad. So again, um, it's really nice during the you know spring, fall, um, you'll see students hanging out, uh, just lounging around. But then across the street is actually the Department of Homeland Security. So again, you still get a sense of, uh, um, you know, quiet, you know, campus life, but then uh, all the action of, of a, a major city. And our students definitely take advantage of that. So they'll have their classes um, in the morning or afternoon, but then they'll be downtown at uh, any of the different museums, restaurants, uh, festivals. You know, we do have the um, Taste of Georgetown, H Street Festival, the, the famous Cherry Blossom Festival as well for students to enjoy. Uh, so again, our uh, kind of campus life, not only uh, is it on our main campus, but also uh, the greater DC and DMV area. So I briefly mentioned that we have lots of ways to get involved in our campus. And I think sometimes people uh, hear about the size of our university and get a little overwhelmed at like, how am I gonna meet people with 30,000 students on one campus? But you will be surprised how fast you make friends. And our campus community is really about that, how you meet people and, and how we set that up. So through our 550 student organizations is how our campus community is so vibrant. Um, student voice is a really, a really big part of that. And our student activities board as well puts on tons and tons of events. Um, we had David Dorbrook on campus last year, which the students were crazy about and they loved that. And that was sponsored by our student activity board, um, SGA, Greek life. I mean, there really is a little bit of something for everybody. So there really is no um, you know, one type or one mold. You can really find whatever you like at our school. It's very active. 
All right, so thank you all for responding to those questions and sharing a little bit about um, your school, your institution. So with that said, we are gonna go ahead and close our session for today. Um, one thing that you should note about our session um, in terms of us closing everything is that these recordings will be available. Um, you can go again and watch that recording in about a week or so, access the recording, um, and review all of the information here. After you close the account today, you will be presented with a brief survey. Um, and again, we just wanna thank you all for attending our college fair today, and we hope you all have a great night.